Hello Proponomics people and welcome to the video from the Advent Calendar for the 20th of December 2023. Today I'm going to be talking about the efficient frontier in investment and also the concept of diversification versus diversification. So this was a word I first heard popularised by the now late great Charlie Munger although he said himself he wasn't the person who invented the word di diversification, he just liked it quite a lot. So diversification is a very typical school of thought in a lot of investment, and the best way to diversify, if we look at the stock market, is to just buy an index tracker that tracks the whole of the market. So it performs exactly as the market performs. How would we do this in property? Well, we would probably buy ourselves a REIT, but we wouldn't buy a REIT that just focused on, for example, commercial property inside the M25, because that's going to be too sensitive to what goes on specifically in and around London and specifically in the commercial property sector. Instead, we might need to buy a basket of REITs or what might be called a fund of funds, and that would then hopefully ape the performance of all of the REITs within the basket. So... What would be the upsides of that? Well, we wouldn't need to put any effort in necessarily. We might need to rebalance the way those shares are allocated to us, but we wouldn't need to be going onto sites, meeting builders, getting quotes, tenders, etc., etc. We would just be trying to get the performance of a truly passive property company. And of course, we would be paying the fees for all the managers within all the REITs that we were having access to. That would be the price of us being able to achieve that now that is true diversification just buying the whole of the market the point is it takes out that in individual property risk for example and it also takes out the geographical risk um, specific to one particular area we can also take out the sector risk like I said it might not just be looking at commercial properties or office or anything we could look at both commercial and residential in the right blend so that we mimicked the entire property makeup of the UK and we could achieve that and that would be diversifying. Now what did Charlie mean when he was talking about diversification? He was talking about doing too many things or investing in too many companies such that you don't actually get more of a benefit. All you do is you get more of a cost or you dilute your focus and focus was the word that Charlie really liked to focus on and also his business partner Warren Buffett likes to consider. So what's their point? Well, they would look really at any one time at between 15 and 30, but probably as low as 20 sorts of companies. And Berkshire Hathaway still does that today, their investment vehicle. It does not want to buy the top 500 shares in the S&P 500, because if that was the case, you wouldn't need a team of people you wouldn't need anything else. You can quite literally get a computer to do it. But they have proven over 70 years with a 20% plus return that they have outperformed the market. Although in the last 15 years or so, they've struggled to outperform the market simply because the size of Berkshire Hathaway is such that it's much harder to find really good value investments. But the concept of diversification is a bit like being underneath the academic concept of the efficient frontier. So the point of the efficient frontier is it represents all of the portfolios where you've traded off some risk for some return. So it's a it's a plot of all of the portfolios of investment. And you could consider this as just being types of property, for example, so that you've traded away some risk for some return. So if we said, for example, retail property returns the most at the moment in terms of cash flow, the cash flows are particularly good, but it's deemed to be particularly risky. Why? Well, the sector's taken a hammering over the past 20 years. The internet has made a big difference. There's widely known to be too much retail property in the UK. The estimates vary between about 15% and about 30% too much retail property already built. So there are obviously big chances of rents coming downwards, leases not being renewed, new retail parks or similar being built elsewhere or nearby that attract people to go there. And so retail is particularly risky. Therefore, you wouldn't necessarily put all your eggs in that basket. But if you did, you would be at the far end of the risk side and be getting the best returns at the moment. But there'd be significant volatility in those returns. If instead you decide 50% retail and 50% buy to let residential property in Birmingham, let's say, then that's a trade off and that's going to bring your returns down 
but it's also going to bring your risk down. And if you do it well, your portfolio can be on the efficient frontier. This is the best level of return you're going to get for the amount of risk you're willing to take. If you don't do it well, you're going to be below the efficient frontier. And what does that mean? Ultimately, it means you're taking more risks and not getting paid a fair price for the risks that you're taking. And that's one of the easiest things to do within property, take risk and not get fairly rewarded for it. There's another video in this series about time, effort, risk and reward, which I'd highly recommend you watch on the back of this one as well. But the one message to take away here is don't diversify just for the sake of it. You absolutely can consider focusing on one particular area, one particular tactic that you want to use, one particular asset management strategy until you've got enough or, or too much and there's diseconomies of scale potentially in going forward anymore. And that's when you might look at moving area, moving geography, moving tenant type or something like that. I hope that video is helpful. Thanks.